Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some insurance math and in particular we're going to be talking about Carvum and I'll go through a simple example of how Carvum works. So what is Carvum? It stands for the Commissioner's Annuity Reserve Valuation Method. This is outlined from the NAIC in various actuarial guidelines. And the basic point of it is that to calculate your reserve for an annuity, what you need to do is evaluate, evaluate all benefit streams that the policyholder has on a present value basis. And carve them is the maximum current present value of those benefits. When it comes to carve them, at least at this point for this example, I just want you to think about surrender charges. In fact, whenever you hear the word carve them, think surrender benefit because that is usually what dominates the Carvum calculation. And we'll go through a simple example here. Let's say that we as an insurance company have sold a single premium deferred annuity of, let's say the premium is, I don't know, $100,000. So someone bought an annuity from us, paid us 100,000 and we are now deferring it and letting it accumulate until it's time to cash out. During the initial period, there's going to be a surrender charge on that annuity. Uh, so we'll just we'll just map it out. Let's assume that there is a seven year surrender charge. So end of year, we'll have a time zero, and then we'll have eight years. You'll see in a minute that it's uh, important to evaluate the surrender charge benefit at, at the at the immediate time that it ex expires. So first we're gonna need some rates. We're gonna need some guaranteed rates and actual rates. So I'll just go ahead and assume that we've sold this annuity and we've guaranteed a rate of, let's say 3% a year. So that's the floor. The policyholder is guaranteed to grow their account at 3% a year, no matter what the market does. And then we have some actual rates. So what, what has the market actually done? This policyholder has taken their annuity money and they have allocated it to a separate account and they've instructed us to invest it in, let's say the S&P 500 index or the Russell 3000 or, or some combination of indices or investments for them. And the actual rates are, let's just say they're a little higher than the guaranteed rate every year. Uh, we'll, we'll go back and play with it later. So now the final rate that we guarantee the policy that we actually pay the policyholder is going to be the, the greater of those two rates. All right? If the market rate is lower than the guarantee rate, we'll pay the guarantee rate, else we'll pay the market rate. So now we can look at the accumulated um, value of those rates. So this is for the final rate. So at time zero, the accumulated value is one. At the end of year one, when I say one, I mean 1.0. 1.0, come on, 100%, fine. So at the end of year one, we've given them 4%. So that means the new accumulated value is 100% times one, one plus 4%. There you go, and it grows substantially over time. Right? So I'm gonna drag it down, control D, and it's gonna grow to be 137% of the initial value after eight years. So that's that's great. Sometimes with an annuity, we will add a front end charge, which is just a fee that we take once we accept the premium. I'm gonna make it 0% at this point, but we can change it later. And we also have what's called a back end charge. I guess I should say this is the front end charge. The back end charge, and this is also called the surrender charge. So if you surrender the policy during the initial couple years, we will take a piece of the account value to compensate us as the insurance company 
for writing the policy and paying the huge commission that we had to pay for the, uh, the person to, to place the policy with us and get those investment earnings. Let's just say it's 8% for seven years and then it goes away and it becomes 0% in year eight. So this is the benefit that we're defining here. The benefit to the policyholder in year eight is that the surrender charge goes away. So that, that's the benefit stream that we are evaluating. And I'm doing this because this is the dominant stream that usually insurers worry about when they sell annuity business. So now we have the fund value. So we can track that over time. And this is just purely the, the value of the fund accumulated at uh, the value here. So if we start at time zero, we have 100,000 times one minus any front end charge that we would put in there. That's our initial value. And then at, uh, at each period of time, it's going to be kind of the same, right? In fact, I can hard code these. B6 will be the initial fund value. At time one, the fund value is going to go to 100,000 times one minus the front end charge, which I'm just keeping it the same column wise. And multiply that by our accumulated value. Okay, so that goes up to, should go up to 137%, 137,000, that looks right. Great, so now we have to calculate our cash surrender value, the CSV, which is simply equal to the fund value times one minus the back end charge, the surrender charge, All right? So even though your fund value is 100,000, if you surrender the policy, immediately or in year one, you're only gonna get 92,000 back. We take 8% as a back end charge and so on. So there you are, there you have it. We have our surrender values. Um, and it, you'll, you'll note that the, the surrender value goes up substantially after year seven. It pops up to 136 from 121. The CARVUM requires you at any valuation point to take the present value of all the future CSVs and take the highest value as your carbon reserve. And that may or may not be higher than your fund value. But let's say that we want to perform evaluation at time two. Okay, so the valuation point at time two, we're asking what is carbon at this time? We also need a little, little bit of extra info. We're gonna need the valuation rate. So what are we going to discount at? That is usually going to be near, near the guaranteed rate. Let's say it's 3%. That's another key input here. In fact, I'll, I'll put it up top here because we'll, we'll use this area up top to track the final results. So now we make another column for PV of CSV. And we only care about it at time two. We're evaluating the policy at time two, let's say. So at time Two, the present value of the CSV is just the CSV at time two. The present value at time three, which is one year hence from time two, is gonna be this CSV value times one plus the valuation rate hard-coded to the negative one power. So we're discounting it back one year. I'll make a little formula that makes that easy. So it's gonna be year three, minus year two, and year two is just gonna be hard-coded. So now we have a, a, a PV of 106,000, oh, negative, negative, there we go. Oh, that shouldn't be, hold on a sec, what did I do? One minus J, oh, to the power, now multiplied, there you go. There you go. So the PV of the CSV is going to be less than the CSV because we're discounting it. And if I just drag this formula down, we can see the evolution of the CSV at this point. The carbon amount is going to be the maximum value of all these PV CSVs. So I just take the max as of the end of year of all these. And I have a carvum of 114,600. You'll note that the fund value 
at this time is not 114,000, right? It is only 108,000. So as the insurer, I have to kind of make up the difference. I lose max of zero and this minus that. So I have to make up the difference of, of 6,000 bucks for this policy. This is the reserve I have to hold, the 114. This is the, the actual fund I have, so I have to pay six grand. I, I lose that money in reserve strengthening to make this policy happen. So this is a really simple example of how Carvum looks, and the surrender charge is usually the dominant thing. Uh, and insurers will mess with these values quite a bit, right? If I increase the surrender charge, that lowers my CSV, and it makes me less likely to have to hold a Carvum reserve, right? If this was, uh, I don't know, 15% or something crazy like that. Uh, well, now I still have this end of period Carvum reserve. Maybe I make this uh, something else, or maybe I, you, you can mess with this quite a bit. Usually they, they try to give you like a smooth evolution of surrender charge from a high number down to a low number. Still, this sticking point at time eight doesn't just go away. You can increase your valuation rate, right? And that will drop it a little bit. Let's say I value it at 4%. Uh, that, that might make sense because I'm actually earning 4%. So if I do that, now my carvum is, is pretty much the same. Well, it is the same as my fund value because the actual rate is equal to the valuation rate. I have to justify why I need to value this at 4%, or maybe I might make it higher to get rid of my carbon entirely, right? So now I lose nothing if the valuation rate is a little little higher. And insurers will play with these numbers, and the actual rates, of course, could go up and down. Like if the actual rate was 2% a year, well, now I'm, I'm going to be, you know, in some trouble here. <laughs> Uh, but the, the fund value doesn't increase as much. The carvum doesn't increase as much. But my valuation rate is probably going to be more like 2%. So I still have uh, to make up some money. Uh, unless you can get your valuation rate to 3%. And now you know, you're exactly right. So these valuation rate, actual rate, guarantee rate dynamics impact the value of carvum you have to have for a policy. As an insurance company, you look at this very carefully. You look at how many annuitants you have that are in the surrender charge period, what their fund values are, and what kind of valuation rate you have to, to use to either get to or eliminate the carbon. So the, the choice of this valuation rate is critical. And the back end charge itself, the, the surrender charge, it can be, for marketing purposes, it can be a variety of different things. That back end charge impacts the CSV in, in the surrender charge period. But the really big problem is that when the surrender charge goes away, how much does it pop up on a, on a present value basis? And how much do I need to hold in, in fund value to satisfy that? And do I need to put up more money? So there are plenty of scenarios where uh, your valuation rate, in this case, if your actual rate is 2% and you're crediting 3%, you're probably going to have some carbon there because your valuation rate is going to be corresponding mostly to the actual return that you're getting and not to the rate that you're guaranteeing. So the last thing you want as an insurance company is to have low returns on an actual basis during the carbon period because now you have to hold extra money to satisfy the carbon, carbon reserve. So that's a really basic carbon reserve, we've only looked at surrender charge, it tends to dominate the calculation. But there are plenty of other charges that add to this benefit stream. In some later lectures, I'll come back and I'll show some some other work, some maturity benefits, some GMDBs. And you also have to remember that this is what they call, I guess, curtate carbon. And that means that we're, we're calculating the carbon at the end of the year. But Theoretically, you, you could get hurt even more by the policyholder, depending on what happens between each of these years. And there's another concept that is required for New York stat valuation, where you, you want to do continuous carvum and basically find the point that the policyholder can hurt you the most possible. So we'll, we'll go through that in a later lecture. But this is at least an introduction to how carvum works with what is usually and arguably 
the biggest benefit stream that a policyholder has, and that is the surrender charge going away. Thank you.